Hey everyone, welcome back to another Web Dev Junkie video. My name is Cody Seibert and in this video I'm going to show you how to deploy a UI to a virtual machine on DigitalOcean. Um, the reason I'm choosing DigitalOcean is because I think it's really easy to get going with and it's pretty cheap, but there's a lot of other static web hosts out there you can use like Netlify or GitHub Pages if you just want to host a really basic UI. So after you create an account on DigitalOcean and log in, you might see a dashboard like this. If you click on your droplets, it'll show you all your droplets you have created. And in this case, we're gonna create a new one. So up here in the top corner, I'm gonna click Create Droplet. And that'll take you to a page where you can select your operating system and a couple of other options. So in our case, we're gonna keep all the defaults except for go to New York, because I am on the East Coast. And I'm gonna be using password authentication, but I could probably do another video about how to do SSH keys. They're both really simple. So for password authentication, just go ahead and type in a password. And once you've typed in the password, you can go down here and you can click Create Droplet. So this might take a minute or two to actually finish creating, but when it is done, you can actually SSH into this machine. So once the droplet is done creating, you can go ahead and hover over this IP address and copy it to your clipboard. And over here, I can just SSH into it by doing SSH space root at, type in the IP address. And it might ask you to type yes or no. If that prompts you, type in yes. And then also it's gonna ask you for the password. So just type in that same password you created earlier. And well, after you typed in the password, you are logged into the machine. So you're actually tunneled into the machine where you can actually run commands. So in this case, we're gonna to try to run Nginx or install Nginx and get it running on the server so that you can access it in your browser. So once you've SSH into the machine, the first thing you probably wanna do on a brand new machine is to do an apt update. So I'm gonna say sudo apt update. And that will update the packages that, packages that are on the machine. And the second step you want to do is you want to install Nginx. So I'm going to say sudo apt install Nginx. It's going to ask you if you want to confirm. I will say yes. All right. So now that Nginx is done installing, what you can do is you can actually load up a new tab and type in that public IP address that's on your droplet. And you can see that it says welcome to Nginx. Now this is a index file that's actually hosted off of your droplet. So the next step is we want to actually push um, a real site to our Nginx server. So what we could actually do is I'm going to exit out of that shell here. And now we're just in our workspace. So if you notice here, if I do an LS, we have a client folder. So I'm going to CD into clients and we also have a disk folder here. So I'm going to CD into disk. So inside of that disk folder, we have a lot of different files that I want to move over to my Nginx server. Um, one thing you can do, which I've already done, is I basically zip up that disk fi file and I'm going to send it over to the server to deploy. There's other ways you can deploy to an actual machine. And as you get more advanced, you could probably look into like using Puppet or Chef or something like that. But if you're doing something really simple, this is a really simple way to get something deployed to your server. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go into the client directory where I have that disk.zip. And I'm going to do a secure copy. So SCP allows you to copy files over SSH into the, the VM that you just created. So I'm going to say SCP for secure copy. And then I'm going to type in the file I want to copy over. So disk.zip. And then I want to type in the uh, basically the IP address of the machine. So I'm going to say root at copy this IP address, type it in, and make sure that you don't type in all that other stuff. And then the last step is you want to put a colon and the location where you want to put these files. So I'm going to do var www.html. So after running this command, it's probably going to ask you for your password. So just go ahead and type it in. And after you've successfully done that, it's going to try to copy your zip file to the remote machine. I think you can do secure copy with actual directories, so you don't actually need to zip them up. But zipping up something is typically faster because it's one file that's sent over the wire instead of maybe like hundreds. So at this point, you can SSH back into the machine if you want. So running that same SSH command we did earlier. Now what you can do is if you go to that folder that we talked about, so var www.html, this is the default folder that Nginx is going to serve off of. So if I look at this file or this folder now, notice that there is a zip here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and say unzip that dist. And we actually need to install an unzip package. So I'm going to say apt sudo apt install unzip first. And now that that is done installing, I could just simply unzip that file and that'll make a dist folder here. And all I need to do is basically just copy the contents of that folder. 
directly into this folder. So now you see here we have a bunch of files that are in that var www.html folder. And if I go back to Nginx and refresh, notice that my app is actually running. And that's really all there is to it. I mean, you could take it set further with like load balancers. And if you have multiple things running on your Nginx server, you can um, have them running on different ports and have Nginx kind of route different sub directories to your different services. So for example, I could do this IP slash API and have that point to a node service. The last step is if you have a domain, you probably want to create an A record and point it to this IP address, assuming that your IP address is static and won't change. Um, I'm not going to be showing that in this video, but it's really easy to check out your domain provider and they usually have tutorials that show you how to do that. So that basically wraps up this little video. The main reason I'm showing this is because sometimes it's good to understand how to SSH into a VM and how to actually set up your own server to host files. I think in this day and age, there's a lot of services out there that kind of do all that for you, like GitHub Pages or Netlify. Um, there's, there's a ton out there. So I think for a beginner, it's good to understand how to actually do stuff on a physical machine before you start doing stuff on these um, service providers that kind of do it all for you. But if you're doing anything of production value, it's probably a better idea to do it on one of these services that kind of take care of all that. But you also need to set up SSL keys to be able to do HTTPS and various other things. All right, so thank you for watching. This is a Web Dev Junkie video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, put them in the comments below. Give me a like and give me a subscribe if you're new to this channel. Thank you so much for watching.